Today I'm talking about testicles. So you either own a pair or you know somebody that does. And testicles are amazing. And if it wasn't for testicles, <laughs> we wouldn't be here. So everybody needs to know about testicles. So I'm gonna talk you through today some interesting facts about them and a very science-based journey of the um, journey the sperm makes to get outside of the male anatomy. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, then keep listening. And if that's not your bag, then switch me off. Uh, but for those of you that are interested, did you know that the term scrotum, so the scrotum is the skin on the outside of the bag, that hangs down and contains the testicles. Did you know that the scrotum is actually, um, comes from a Latin word called scrotum, which is the bag that the arrows would be kept in of an archer, the quiver. So um, that's where the origin of the name scrotum comes from. And the scrotum, interesting fact number one, keeps the very fragile and delicate sperm cells um, three degrees lower than what they would be if they were inside the body and the heat would basically make them shrivel up and die if they were in that temperature too long so they have to be outside of the body to be maintained at that three degrees lower temperature and inside the scrotum there is um, or inside of the testicular area there is a muscle that if you are too cold will contract to pull those fragile little sperm cells higher up towards the body, towards the blood source, to keep them warmer. So, um, what else? Random fact, um, most males have one scrotum which lies lower than the other. And it's the left one usually. So, on average, most people's left scrotum hangs out a little bit lower. If yours is the right, don't worry, you're not weird. Everybody's different, it's just, an average. So what I thought I would do is talk you through just some really basic anatomical diagrams. Nothing weird, no full frontal uh, pictures or anything strange like that, just anatomic, anatomical diagrams and um, some interesting facts because you probably did about this when you were about 14, 15 and you might have forgotten it all. And it's really good for us all to keep our testicles healthy and the testicles of the people that we love healthy. So that includes some talk about the prostate as well. So things to look out for there. And um, well, let's get cracking. So this is a little hand-drawn diagram by myself of the workings inside a testicle and you're looking at this as though the man is facing that way. So he's, this is a sidewards view. Um, so here is the scrotum, the skin, and this is all the inner workings. So it's really amazing and really tightly packed in there. Um, there's a reason why they feel lumpy, which I'll get to in a moment. So here inside these tiny little lobules, are something called the seminiferous tubules. Now inside these, in these little pink bits, these little tubules, this is the start of life. This is where the tiny little sperm cells, the tiny little spermatoses are first made. And also inside these seminiferous tubules here, this is where, when the body um, makes testosterone, that's where it is secreted from little cells inside there. Now, once these tiny little sperm cells um, are made, then they go through these little ducts and then they enter this area, the epididymis. You can probably remember that name from school. Um, so the epididymis the sperm will kind of store in it for quite a while and they go through a maturing process while they're in there. Um, they have to grow up a little bit before they're ready to be moved on on their onwards journey. So uh, this area is huge, right? You know, I mentioned we were a bit lumpy in the testicular area earlier, and that's very normal. It's usually this that you can feel. Um, sorry, I told you the man was facing that way and he's not, he's facing this way. Um, this area is the 
where you would feel on the top of the testicle and this epididymis is six meters in length so think back to when you did your five meter swimming or when your kids have done their five meter swimming badge it's longer than that it's massive tightly curled up and that's what all those lumpy bits are that you can feel so uh, and then this bit actually is really long these little tubules are 70 centimeters so there's like a massive amount of tubes going on inside the testicle um, so inside here then the sperm are, are all sort of maturing and growing and the sperm themselves are the head of the sperm is tightly packed with mitochondria. I don't know if you remember that term from the, your basic anatomy of a cell. It's the powerhouse. It's what gives it its energy. And they have so much mitochondria compared to, I don't know, just like a skin cell. Um, it's basically a huge battery pack that's going to be used um, to give that tail of theirs the energy it needs to whip along and give it that motility. So sperm are really fragile and they have a lot to put up with. Um, they have this huge journey to get through and they've got to get through the male body for a certain period and cope with the temperatures and then they've got to get into the female's body which if unless the lady's not around unless the lady's around her ovulation time her vagina is naturally going to be acidic uh, which would destroy the sperm um, if she is receptive and at her ovulation period then she will naturally coat her vagina um, by secretions that she makes in an alkaline solution to help the sperm so they're very very fragile and they can be damaged along the way very easily so um what else did I want to tell you about sperm? So sperm contain this natural antibiotic, which is amazing really, because um, it's to protect it against certain bacteria it may encounter along its journey. And as far as certain bacteria are concerned, it is an effective antibiotic as penicillin. It also has this immunosuppressant quality to it. So you know if you get a splinter in your finger your body's natural reaction is to expel it well your body doesn't like things going into it that don't belong that aren't yours so unless the female is in her receptive point of her cycle her body is naturally going to want to expel something that isn't hers that doesn't belong to her so this immunosuppressant quality that the sperm has is thought to help with that process as the sperm actually enters the vagina it also contains this clotting factor that it gets from the prostate which is fascinating really because um, basically what goes up must come down and in order to make a baby the sperm has to stay up so <laughs> <laughs> so the prostate adds in this clotting enzyme that makes the ejaculate thicker and to help it cling to the cervix more to prevent the dropping back down of gravity. The other thing about the um, seminal fluid or the ejaculate, whatever you want to call it, is it also contains a fructose in it, which is basically a meal for those tiny little um, cells because every cell needs some form of glucose or fructose to, to survive and to give energy so the seminal fluid contains a ready-made meal for the cell to help power it on on its journey so once all the sperm have matured and um, we are called into action then they shoot up the start of the vas deferens which is this tube here and the vas deferens is also known as the deferent duct. It's pretty much the same thing. And um, the vas deferens is 45 centimetres long. Let me show you this other diagram to show you what happens next. So the sperm heads up this vas deferens until it reaches here. Look, it passes in front of the bladder. There's the bladder. And it passes in front of the bladder, loops around the ureter, which is the tube that comes down from the kidney and puts the urine into the bladder. So it loops around the back of that and then it enters this. And this is the seminal vesicle. 
and this contains seminal fluid. So, so far we've just had the little sperms coming along, but they need this fluid to survive. And this seminal fluid contracts when it needs to be ejaculated and expels this nourishing fluid around the sperm. And um, this fluid will account for 60% of the total amount of ejaculate that is expelled. And this is what gives it that alkaline protection. It uh, is around about pH 7.2 to 7.6. And this is where it gives it that nice fructose meal to fuel the sperm through its onwards journey. So along here then, it comes down this little tube here. And if you look, the male anatomy, it has one tube that exits the penis, and that is the urethra. So the urethra is what takes the wee out the bladder. And the um, vas deferens goes through the seminal vesicle and takes the now liquidy sperm into this urethra and shares the same tube. Now, this urethra is also going to be acidic because of the urine. So this is another reason why this has to alkaline coat or the sperm. This here is the prostate gland and this wraps around the whole thing. That's like a cross section, it wraps around it. So the prostate adds the milky fluid that gives um, ejaculate the colour that you know it to be. And it's that milky fluid that contains that clotting enzyme I was telling you about that thickens the semen in the vagina, helping the semen to be retained by the cervix against gravity. Uh, and helping it, helping the, giving the sperm a little chance to find their way um, before they, you know, get expelled by gravity. So the prostate, as you can see, is gonna, you, if you have an enlargement of your prostate, which I'll come back to in a minute, you're gonna experience some kind of irregularities from what you're used to with how you wee, and you might notice something about um, your functioning when you're wanting to, um, let's put it, have a bit of nookie. So if you have any kind of strange symptoms about weeing or from sex, please go and see a doctor because it is really important to get this checked out. Naturally, your prostate does grow bigger as you get older, but sometimes it gets a little inflamed or a little enlarged too much and it can press on your bladder and it can you can have problems getting your pee out. So just be aware of that. So coming along then, the ejaculate then moves with the milky fluid, the clotting factor with the alkaline and it and it comes down and out, out the penis. So that is basically it. So testicles are lumpy. There's so many tubes in them, so much going on. I mean, that's not even taking into account the blood vessels, the lymphatic tissue and the nerve tissue. They're full of tubes basically in a very small area. Um, get to know your lumps because those kind of lumps in the tubes will pretty much stay the same throughout your life. And then if you feel any other lumpy bits that weren't there last week or the month before, they're the ones you need to question. But don't feel too stressed if you're having a check and you do feel that they feel quite grainy and quite lumpy because that's really normal. But get to know your normal so that you know the difference. Um, it's quite common to feel a little bit of inflammation on them sometimes. Um, if you imagine how many tubes you've got and um, trying to get a liquid through them all the time, then you can imagine that sometimes things might get a bit stuck and get a little bit inflamed. The best thing you can do in these situations is just drink tons of water and if it carries on, then go and see your doctor. But don't worry too much if they're just feeling a little bit achy. Don't forget you've got a lot of lymphatic tissue in them as well. And when you're trying to get rid of a, a bug or an illness, your lymphatic tissue will swell and um, become a bit sore, like when your glands get sore under here. So um, look out for your prostate by noticing your weeing patterns. Are you getting up for a wee more? 
can you get your whole Wii out in one stream or is it a bit stop, start, stop, start, stop, start? Do you feel like you need to pee all the time? Um, do you feel like you need to pee and then you can't get it out? These are all things to be aware of. So, hope that was useful. Didn't turn you, put you off your dinner too much. <laughs> if it was, let me know and I'll do some other little videos. But um, that's it for today. Bye.